Turn now to a look at a story about the oil giant BP that has received nearly no national attention. Just over three months ago, thousands of pounds of toxic chemicals began spewing into the skies from BP's massive oil refinery in Texas City. The release began on April 6th, two weeks before the explosion on the Deepwater Horizon oil rig. But it took BP weeks to even realize there was a problem. BP now estimates 538,000 pounds of chemicals escaped from the refinery over a 40-day period. The journalist Ryan Knudsen of ProPublica and Frontline recently traveled to Texas City to investigate what happened. He joins us here in New York. His reporting on the story appears on the website ProPublica.org. Welcome, Ryan. Tell us what you found. Thanks. Well, um, we sort of went at this with the question of, well, you know, in 2005, BP had a disaster at this Texas City refinery where 15 people were killed. And after that event, um, you know, BP made it said it was a transformational event. They would make a lot of changes to the organization or to their company. The Deepwater Horizon happened. So we wanted to examine, well, what was the lead up to that explosion and what has been the outcome of the promises to improve the company? And um, it didn't take long to start finding that there have still been a lot of issues at the Texas City refinery. And most notably, um, what I thought was interesting was uh, this was a story that was actually in the Daily News of Galveston County that on June 5th that hadn't received any attention elsewhere, that there had been this 538,000-pound release. And what happened in that circumstance was there's a, something called an ultra-cracker at this refinery, and it takes... It's a, an important step in the process to produce gasoline, and there's a hydrogen compressor on this ultra cracker, and it broke down. And what it does is it it captures a lot of the pollution that's emitted from this, and it, it disposes of it safely. Now, when that broke down, uh, BP had a choice: do we shut down the ultra cracker and lose an important part of producing gasoline that we'd have to buy elsewhere, or maybe reformulate the gasoline, or do we send everything to a flare and burn it off into the atmosphere? Now, flares, at best case, can destroy 98 percent of of the chemicals that are sent to it, so 2 percent they know is going to release. At best case, there's also studies that show that as much as 20 percent of what is sent to a flare doesn't get destroyed and is uh, sent off into the atmosphere. Um, so they decided to send it to a flare, and uh, it took them 40 days to make the repairs. And once they were finished, by the time that they had um, finished analyzing all the data they had collected during the emissions event, they determined that 538,000 pounds of chemicals released into the atmosphere, most notably 17,000 pounds of benzene. Now, in the state of Texas, if you emit more than 10 pounds in a 24-hour period, you're supposed to report that as an emissions event. In this case, 425 pounds of benzene were being released uh, every 24 hours for 40 days, ultimately leading up to 17,000 pounds. And this is already a plant that has one of the uh, highest benzene release uh, rates uh, in the country, isn't it? Right. Uh, the Sierra Club uh, did a study um, that, from looking at uh, reportable emissions events from 1997 to 2007, and found that the Texas City refinery was the number one releaser of benzene in the United States. Uh, BP says that it has reduced uh, its benzene uh, emissions there by, I believe, 23 percent over each year, or 50 percent from last year. So the numbers have gone down significantly uh, since that 2007 study was completed. But um, as, um, you know, environmental advocates make the case, well, there's already a lot of benzene coming from that refinery. There's a lot of benzene because in, in that Texas City community because there's a couple other refineries there. So it's a... It's a and how is it possible for this release to go on for so long? You would assume that if they know that they uh, they were trying to burn uh, some of these gases off with a flare, that they would have a likelihood of a potential uh, for extra releases that they'd be monitoring on a daily basis. Right. And that's the thing that I had a hard time um, pinning down from the, the BP people I spoke with, because I know that I mean, what they said originally is that they've got a, a, a method that's approved by Texas regulators to monitor this along the way. And what they, I know that they have fence line monitors that are about six feet high. And so if they're, if it reaches any sort of threshold, then it pages officials at the refinery and they make a decision. And so apparently the fence line monitors didn't, um, didn't go off. Now the, the, the flare is 300 feet tall. So, Clearly, this is going to kind of go out and sort of spread around. And so there's various science about wh what the concentration is once it reaches the ground. It depends on the wind and things what like that. What does benzene do? 
Well, benzene is a known carcinogen, so it doesn't uh, necessarily have immediate, you know, I don't know, the, I mean, imagine if you were in a room full of it, you'd start coughing and wheezing and that sort of thing, but uh, it's proven that it will increase uh, your cause or your likelihood of getting cancer. Especially leukemia, right? Yeah, yeah. Last year, the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, OSHA, fined the company, BP, $87 million for failing to address safety problems from 2005 when they killed 15 people. Yeah, um, and so yeah, in 05 they were they uh, they settled with OSHA for 21 million dollars, and they agreed to a number of improvements at the plant. And one of the the, the main things that they agreed to is they were going to hire an independent auditor to come in and do an examination of the plant, point out things that need to be improved. Um, OSHA says that the, that um, BP should have made all those improvements by the end of 2009. BP says that it was under the impression that they just needed to have the auditor point these things out by September 2009 and that they could make these improvements as they made maintenance upgrades along the way. Well, I wanted to go to the issue of the difficulty of reporting this.